do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we will study the measurement of self inductance using the ohms bridge this bridge measures the value of self inductance in terms of capacitance so let us start with our topic Now this Ohm's bridge it is a type of alternating current bridge so this bridge will consist of four arms having four impedances and out of these four impedances one impedance is an unknown impedance and the other remaining three impedances they are the known impedances so this Ohm's bridge it will consist of four arms AB BC CD and DA and in these four arms we are having the four impedances Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Out of these four Z1 is an unknown impedance and the remaining three impedances they are the known impedances. Now impedances they can be a combination of a resistance inductor or a capacitor. It can be a series combination also and it can be a parallel combination also. So impedances it will be either a resistance or an inductor or a capacitor. Okay. Now other than these four arms we are having a detector also in the alternating current bridge and this detector is used to obtain the balance condition. The balance condition for the bridge is when this detector is going to give us a null deflection. The detectors in the alternating current bridge, they can be headphones, vibrational galvanometers or the tunable amplifier circuits. And in that, we, if we get uh, no sound is heard in the headphones, it means that the detector is giving us the null deflection and the bridge is said to be balanced. Now, when the bridge is balanced, then we have a balance condition and uh, the general balance condition for an alternating current bridge is that Z1, Z4 is equals to Z2, Z3. That is the product of the magnitude of the impedances present in the opposite pair of arms. They will be equal. So Z1 and Z4, they are present in the opposite pair of arms and Z2, Z3, they are also present in the opposite arms. So their uh, magnitude of these impedances, they will be equal. So by this balance condition, we can easily find out the value of this unknown impedance in terms of the known impedances or known variables. So here Z1 is the self inductance which we want to measure and Z2, Z3, Z4 it can be a resistance also, it can be a capacitor or an inductor also. So this was the uh, component detector. Also here we are having an AC voltage source which is providing the power supply to the bridge network. So this Ohm's bridge it will consist of four arms. It will consist of a detector and also an AC voltage source. So let us draw the circuit diagram for this Ohm's bridge.
so this is the owns bridge in this bridge you can see we are having the four impedances okay in the arm ab we are having the unknown uh, inductance which we want to measure having an effective resistance r1 okay or rx here in this arm we are having a variable resistance r2 connected with the capacitor c2 here we are having the capacitor c4 fixed standard capacitor and here we are having r3 which is an known non-inductive resistance r3 in between the b and d uh, points we have the detector which is used to obtain the null condition or the balance condition then voltage source is connected between the a and the c points and this voltage source is providing the emf e the total emf now even is the voltage drop across the arm ab across ad we are having the voltage drop e2 across bc we are having e3 and across cd we are having the voltage drop e4 now in the arm ab the current flowing is the current i1 here the current is i2 in this sum we are having i4 and in this sum we are having the current i3 now when this bridge is balanced then this detector will give us the null deflection it means that no current is flowing through this detector and the points b and d they are at the same potential now when these points b and d are same potential and no current is flowing through the detector we can treated as an open circuit so when this is an open circuit this i1 current will be equal to the current i3 and also this i2 current will be equal to the current i4 also if b and d are at the same potential it means that the voltage drop e1 it will be equal to the voltage drop e2 so here we can easily write the balance equations for this bridge also so let us see first the because we know that the balance condition is what z1 z4 is equals to z2 z3 so we have to first determine the impedances in these arms and then we will put their value in that balance condition to determine the self inductance so first let us talk about the arm ab arm ab as uh, i have said that it consists of an unknown inductance lx which is having an effective resistance rx with it okay so if we write the value of the impedance z1 z1 will be equal to the series combination of rx and lx so rx plus lx we can write it as xl that is the inductive reactance so it will be equal to j omega l so here we will write j omega l x so that is the value of the z1 impedance so this is the circuit diagram for the ohms bridge okay now let's see the configuration of this bridge in the arm ab we are having the unknown inductance of having effective resistance as r1 okay so ab is the unknown inductance l1 of effective resistance then we are having in the arm bc we are having a known non inductive resistance r3 in arm cd we are having uh, the capacitor and in um da we are having the series combination of a capacitor variable capacitor and a variable resistance
So here we are having a variable non-inductive resistance R2 which is connected in series with the variable standard capacitor C2. So in arm AB we are having the impedance Z1. So Z1 is the series combination of R1 and L1. So it will be equals to R1 plus J omega L1. In arm BC we are having the resistance R3 only. So Z3 will be equals to R3. In CD we are having the fixed standard capacitor C4. So Z4 will be equals to 1 upon J omega C4. And in arm DA we are having the series combination of a resistor and a capacitor. So it will be equal to Z. 2 equals to R2 plus 1 upon J omega C2. Okay. So we have got the value of all the four impedances. Now we are going to put the value of these impedances in the balance equation. And the balance equation for an alternating current bridge is Z1, Z4 is equals to Z2, Z3. So putting the value of the impedances in this equation, Z1 was R1 plus J omega L1. Z4 was 1 upon J omega C4. Z2 is R2 plus 1 upon J omega C2. And Z3 is R3. Okay. So multiplying this with uh, this inside the bracket and R3 inside the bracket, we will get R1 upon J omega C4 plus J omega L1 upon J omega C4. So J omega and J omega, it will be cancelled. We are left with L1 upon C4 equals to R2 R3 plus R3 upon J omega C2. Now in this equation we are having imaginary terms and the real part terms. So real terms are L1 upon C4 equals to R2 R3. We are um, separating this equation. We are dividing it into two parts. One is the equation having only the real part and another equation will have only the imaginary parts. So imaginary parts are those in which J omega term is present. So here we are having R1 upon J omega C4 equals to R3 upon J omega C2. Okay. J omega, J omega, it will be cancelled. So, we will get the value of R1 as R3 C4 by C2. Okay. And from this real part equation, we will get the value of L1 as R2 R3 C4. So this is how using this balance equation we are getting the value of the unknown inductance and its effective resistance. So the unknown impedance Z1 was R1 plus J omega L1. We have got the value of L1 also and we have got the value of R1 also. So we can calculate this unknown impedance from this Ohm's bridge. And this unknown impedance is the inductance of a coil, self-inductance of a coil. Now let's come to the phasor diagram of the Ohm's bridge. In the phasor diagram, we draw the relationship between the various voltages and the currents across the elements of the bridge. So phasor diagram. will represent the relationship between the currents and voltages. You can see in the circuit diagram, we are having the voltage drop across each arm as E1, E2, E3 and E4. And the currents in these branch are I1, I2, I3 and I4. The total voltage is the E 
okay so now we will see that across each of the element what is the phase relationship between the voltage and the current so for this we should know that across a resistance the voltage and the current they are in same phase whereas in the case of the inductor the voltage leads the current by 90 degree and in the case of capacitor the voltage lags the current by 90 degree so in inductor it is going to lead the current and in capacitor it is going to lag the current so we are going to use these relationships to draw the phasor diagram now this phasor diagram it is always drawn with respect to some phasor we have to choose any of the current or voltage as our reference phasor and all the other vectors they will be drawn with respect to it so here we are going to choose the current i1 as the reference okay and if we see in the circuit diagram the i1 current is flowing in the arm ab first we will consider this resistor r1 current across it is i1 and voltage drop will be i1 r1 so i1 r1 and i1 they will be in uh, they will be in same phase because it is across a resistance so i1 r1 will be drawn on the same line now next element is the inductor so across inductor voltage leads the current voltage drop will be i1 up omega l1 and uh, the current is what i1 so voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degrees so they will be 90 degree in difference with each other so current is drawn here i1 and i1 omega l1 will be 90 degree ahead of it now if we talk about the total voltage drop across this arm ab it is e1 and E1 is the sum of the voltage drop across the resistance and the inductor. So resistance was I1 R1 plus this I1 omega L1. So if we draw the resultant of these two vectors, it will be the EMF E1. So E1 is the sum of I1 omega L1 and I1 R1. Now, when this bridge is balanced then no current is flowing through the detector so this i1 current will be equal to the i3 current and also this i2 current will be equal to the i4 current so i1 is equals to i3 and i2 is equals to i4 also this b and d points they are at the same potential okay same potential means voltage drop e1 is equal to voltage drop e2 and voltage drop e3 is equals to the voltage drop e4 okay now even uh, emf we have already drawn on the phasor diagram here we are having e1 so this e1 is equals to e2 now e2 is what voltage drop across this so it will be the sum of the voltage drop across the resistance and the capacitor so e2 is equals to i2 r2 plus i2 upon omega c2 okay means across the capacitor and across the resistance their sum will be equal to the e2 so e2 we have already drawn here and this will be equal to the sum of the uh, capacitor and the uh, resistor part okay so here we will draw the here we are drawing the current i2 and on the same line we will draw the voltage due to the voltage drop due to the resistance 
R2 because this I2 R2 will be in same phase with I2 and the current across the uh, the voltage drop across the capacitor it is going to lag the current by 90 degree so here we will have the voltage drop due to the capacitor and their sum if we take the sum of i2 r2 this was i2 r2 and this was i2 upon omega c2 so their sum is equal to the e2 okay so this was the left hand side part now coming to the right hand side we are having the voltage drop across this resistance r3 as i3 r3 now I3 and I1 are equal so we can write it as I1 R3 also. So I1 R3 voltage drop across this resistance that will be in same phase with the current that is I1. So I1 we have drawn here so we will draw I1 R3 also on the same line. And what is this I1 R3? It is the EMF E3. Now E3 is equal to E4 when the bridge is balanced and what is E4? E4 is the voltage drop across this capacitor. So voltage drop is I4 upon omega C4. Now I4 and I2 they are equal. So we can write it as I2 upon omega C4 also. So you can see I2 current is here and the vo uh, voltage across the capacitor it is lagging behind the current by 90 degree. This is the 90 degree angle by which the capacitor voltage is lagging behind the current. So this was E3 or we can say E4 here we are having E1 or E2. Now the total EMF E it will be the sum of E1 plus E3 or E2 plus E4. So we are going to extend this. And we will get the resultant EMF E. Which is the sum of E1 plus E2 or we can say E3 plus E1 plus E3 or E 2 plus E4. Okay. So this is the phasor diagram of the Ohm's bridge. In this you can see we have drawn the relationship between phase relationship between the various currents and voltages across all the elements which are present in the circuit of the bridge. Okay. Now let's come to the advantages and disadvantages of Ohm's bridge. If we see the advantages of this bridge, then if we uh, see the balance equation for this bridge, then balance equation says that uh, for the inductance, we are not having the capacitor term. We are having C2 as the capacitor. So C2 is not present in this equation. Also here in this equation R2 is not present. So both these equations they are independent of each other. If we choose C2 and R2 as our uh, variables. Okay. So first advantage is that the two balance equations. Okay, because the R2 is not present in this equation for R1 and C2 is not present in the uh, equation for L1. So if R2 and C2 are chosen as the variables, then we these two equations, they become independent of each other. Second advantage is that there is no, uh, this equations, they are very simple and they do not contain any frequency term in it. Uh, another advantage of this Ohm's bridge is that this bridge can be used for uh, the measurement of wide range of inductances means the range of values for the measurement of inductance it is very wide.
ओके so these are the advantages of the owns bridge if we talk about the disadvantage then there is only one disadvantage of this uh, bridge that in this bridge we are using a capacitor a standard capacitor is used and this capacitor is very expensive and also the accuracy is of this capacitor is also only 1% so this is the disadvantage and also the accuracy of this capacitor is about 1% okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of the owns bridge so in this video we studied the measurement of the self inductance of a coil by comparing its value with a standard capacitor now uh, also we studied the phasor diagram and the formulas for the inductance and the effective resistance and uh, in the last we studied the advantages and disadvantages also so i hope that this topic measurement of self inductance using the ohms bridge is clear to you thank you